Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Um, I would like to welcome you in our Lenten recollection today. And I would like to introduce to you our guest speaker tonight. He was uh, 20 years in priestly ministry, and he is our formation director in St. Vincent School of Theology, the Paul Formation House. Without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Reverend Father John Era CM. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I'm just so happy na nandito po ako ngayon uh, sa ating parokya ng Santo Nino. At yung mga sumusunod sa atin na mga viewers sa uh, live stream ng Facebook, magandang gabi po din sa inyong lahat. na. Uh, Ako ay eh, tubong tandansora, kaya nakita ko tong simbahan na to ginagawa, no? I saw this how this was erected, no? Pagdadaan kami diyan ng daddy ko, no? Uh, bago no, ba, siguro mga 1980s ito ginawa eh, no? If I'm not mistaken, ang uh, simbahan na ito. Mga 1980s, I remember, I, ako po eh batang-bata pa po noon. At uh, first time kong makapasok sa simbahan na ito. <laughs> I always just see this uh, from uh, yan, sa, sa kalsadang yan, bago pa ang SM din noon, naalala ko po yun, no? kaya ako ay masayang masaya at nandito po ngayon sa inyo. No? Okay, uh, for our recollection this Lent, no? the topic is Gifted to Give. No? Ito ay tema ng ating celebration ng 500 years no? ng Christianity sa ating bansa. And I really like the title, no? Yung temang ito, no? When I first heard this, napakaganda, no? Gifted to give, no? Para sa akin, malaking responsibilidad pag sinabi natin na tayo ay nirigaluhan, no? And if it is something, if it is a gift na tinanggap natin, no? Di ba pagka nakakatanggap tayo ng regalo, masaya tayo, no? Uh, I'm sure na tuwan-tuwa tayo kapag ka meron tayong uh, natatanggap na regalo. No? And we feel affirmed somehow when people would give us gift. Why? Because when we receive a gift, what does that mean? Special tayo. Right? No? Kapag nakatanggap kayo ng regalo, ibig sabihin nun, kayo ay special sa taong yun. At dahil special kayo, pinapahalagahan kayo. At minsan, no, although sinasabi natin, no, uh, it's the thought that counts. No, hindi importante kung gaano kamahal o kamura ng regalo ang mahalaga ikaw ay naalala, no? And when you receive that something, no, you feel so proud. Pero I have to say, no, minsan, no, uh, let's admit, no, pagka medyo mahal yung binigay sa atin, mas nakaka-affirm. <laughs> No? Ibig sabihin eh talagang pinaggastusan ka ng taong 'yon, no? Dahil kapag ang regalo ay mahal na mahal and we measure it according to what? Uh, siguro sa cost, no? Ayun ang way of measuring natin eh, no? Doon natin nakikita kung gaano tayo kaimportante, no? And our gift I think is the most expensive gift that we receive from God. Kaya tayo ay napaka espesyal. At paano tayo magiging espesyal? Ipapakita ko po ito, no? no? And throughout history, what makes us so special? Bakit tayo nirigaluhan ng Diyos na sobrang mahal na regalo? No? Kaya lang po, pag mahal po ang regalo, Yung nagre-regalo, minsan nagiging demanding sa atin. Di ho ba? <laughs> Kapag ka binibigyan kayo ng regalo, at napapasin nyo, naku, medyo mahal yung binibigay sa akin. You feel indebted to that person. Tama? No? Minsan nga ho, yung nagre-regalo, nagiging demanding na eh. No? Kaya sabi natin, no, hindi mo pwede, kaya nakalangan gawin mo to, no? Kaya meron tayo din ng ethics of giving, no? na uh, minsan kasi nagiging pwedeng gamitin din ito para makontrol tayo, no? Tama 'yon. Nagiging demanding. 
And I think that's part of any relationship. Hindi mo awala ang demands. No? Meron ho ba ritong magkasintahan na nandito ngayon? Taas ang kamay. Wala. Wala, no? Pero meron dito mag-ina. Ano? Di ba? So, si, si mami, kapag ka nagregalo kay Daniel, you expect something dahil nanay, no? Kailangan maging mabuting anak yung bata, no? Pag binibigyan, no? Ina-expect mo na sana naman, no? Balikan din ako ng kabutihan ng anak ko. It's normal, no? Parte ho yan. Kasama yan sa relational aspect ng giving. Kaya dito, ipapakita ko ngayon kung ano, itong regalong ito na binigay sa atin ng Diyos at ano ngayon ang expectations niya sa atin. May expectation po ang Diyos, no? Yes. Mamaya, pag-usapan natin yan. Alam ko po, alam niyo po itong, uh, itong uh, Bible verse na ito. Go to all the nations and proclaim the good news. Maririnig po natin yan, lalong-lalo na po pagkatapos po ng Lent. Where, what? Christ will be proclaiming to His disciples, you have to go out. You have to go. I did my part. Now I am about to leave you. And when I leave you, I expect that you go and proclaim what, what I taught you. Kung ano yung tinuro ko sa inyo, kailangan i-proclaim ninyo to all nations. And I will argue, why is that important? Bakit kinakailangan natin mag-evangelize? Ayan po yung word. Sino ho rito mga leaders po ng simbahan? Lay leaders. Kayo ho lahat? Tama? No? Mga youth leaders. Meron dito. Taas sa kamay. Youth leaders? Youth, youth leader ka ba? Hindi, hindi. O mga sa ministry dito sa church. Kayo po, ano? O pagkatapos po nitong uh, toko, nako, sabihin nyo, nako, Father, ang dami pala naming responsibility. Yes, marami po. And I will talk about that. Why it's so important to proclaim to all the nations the good news. Why? No, mamaya, pag-aanin natin yan. Nakita niyo ba yung picture, no? Nakita yung picture dito, no? What do you see there? You see Christ teaching His disciples, right? And then after that, next picture, where do you go? The one on the right, uh, no, left, top, topmost of the frame. Uh, actually, that is St. Paul. St. Paul proclaiming the gospel. No, if you are going back to the history of Simbahan, si St. Paul masipag. <laughs> he has been traveling and going around, starting from where Christ, no, naglakad, pumunta ko saan saan, nagbangka. For what? To proclaim the good news. Bakit nga ba nagsimula sa Israel, sa Jerusalem, yung Christianity, para nakaabot ng Pilipinas? Di ba? Nung panahon na yun, pa, paano? Okay? And so, St. Paul took to heart and seriously the mandate of Jesus when He said, Go to all the nations and proclaim the good news. Sineryoso po yan ni St. Paul. At ito pa ang nakakamangha. St. Paul is the number one persecutor of the early Christians. Tama. Pinapatay niya yung mga Kristiyano noon. Siya ay isang faithful na Hudyo. At dahil marami ang sumusunod kay Kristo, siya ang number one persecutor. Kaya kinakatakutan siya. Just imagine, from the first persecutor naging number one proclaimer of the gospel. Ano nangyari? Dahil of that conversion, no? alam natin yung story siguro yun, no? January 25th, we celebrate the no? conversion of St. Paul. At dahil doon, kinalimutan niya yung ginagawa niyang pagpa-persecute. At siya na ngayon ang nangunguna 
na kung sino yung pinapatay niya noon, imagine, no? nag-turn around. Dating supporter ng mga namamamatay tao, biglang nagbago. Pwede palang magbago, no? Kung supporter kayo ng mga mamamatay tao, eh, may pag-asa pala, no? Number one supporter, pero biglang nagbago. So, papaposible. And because of Christ's intervention. And what did he do? He started going around and proclaiming the gospel of Christ. Why? Because Christ said so. Go to all the nations and proclaim the good news. Ano yung nakita yung sa baba? Sa Pilipinas na po yan, no? Oh, may mga Espanyol na nagpuntahan sa atin, no? Uh, although there is not, it's not always a positive part of our history, pero may malaking bagay na nangyari. No? Kasama rin noon ay yung pananampalataya. That is why now, we are a Christian nation. Okay? Dinala po sa atin. Kaya kung ngayon sila celebrate na natin. Again, why? We have... We had that mandate. Proclaim. No? Proclaim. And they took that seriously. Ngayon, nasa gitna, yung picture, kayo, no? Dahil you have received that mandate, hindi lamang po si Father ang in-charge sa pag-proclaim ng good news. Kayo din po. Lahat po tayo. We are in charge. And I will tell you why. Why we are more needed now. Ewan ko kung makikita niyo ito. Masyadong maliit. Pero anyway, papakita ko lang po. Ito yung mapa ng mga Kristiyano sa buong mundo. Okay. Of course, we are we are the biggest in terms of population sa buong mundo. No? Christianity, no? In the millions yan, no? Christian population. Just imagine, no? nagsimula lang, no? Kala St. Paul, sa mga early apostles, biglang lumaki ng lumaki, no? Just imagine that power of that word of God saying, go and proclaim the good news to all the nation. Nandiyan na po, by the millions yan. Iyan lang po yung pinapakita niya. Just for your reference lang naman po. So, let's go back. We are gifted with that faith. Yang pananampalataya na yan ay regalo po sa ating lahat. And when we receive that gift, sabi ko nga sa introduction ko kanina, no? There is that big requirement, no? Our giver is expecting something from us. Our giver is asking something from us. What? To continue on that early mandate that we had since time immemorial when Christ said, Go to all the nations and proclaim the good news. Sabi niyo siguro sa akin, Father, ano yung gagayahin namin si St. Paul? Maglalakad din kami kung saan-saan. Huh? Pwede naman kung gusto ninyo. No? Why not? No? Baka may ginagawa kayo mga BEC rito, you go around. Right? That's one way of doing it. Or maybe you are uh, you, you do home visits. Why not? Ngayong COVID lang, siguro baka na-hold. No? Because of the pandemic. However, you could be doing that. Proclaiming. Or maybe some of you will say, hey, Father, ang ibig sabihin, maging misyonero ako. Why not? No? If you want to, pwede. No? Eh, Father, ano yung ibig sabihin? Kailangan pumasok ko sa seminaryo para maging pare. Why not? No? Uh, we have Daniel here. No? Why not? No? Pwede. Eh, Father, kung kayo ako magpare, anong ibig sabihin? Gusto nyo mag, uh, uh, mag-religion teacher ako? Why not? Kung po pwede. Pero Father, ayoko naman mag-religion teacher kasi medyo may iba ang karir ko. Mas gusto ko yata maging nurse. O kaya mas magusto ko maging doktor. O kaya abogado. Paano yun? Pwede pa rin. Pwede pa rin. And I'll be talking about that, how to do it. In short, 
You may have your own directions in life. You may have your own career path. But part of our, what? Our identity as Christians is to share that gift. No matter where we are, no matter what kind of job we hold, no matter your positions is in our society, everything is the same para po sa lahat. We have that calling. Okay. And what is that? Balikan po natin yung pananampalataya natin. Ano ba yung pananampalataya natin? Anong klaseng pananampalataya ba meron tayo? Is my faith just um, uh, focus on kneeling in the church? Is my fa faith just reduced to praying the rosary? Or is my faith is just reduced to um, going to Mass every day? They are all good, of course. We need that. However, because we are gifted with that faith, mas may malaking hamon po sa atin. Kaya po yung mga nakikinig po ngayon, no? yung mga gaga attend po ng recollection po ito, may take away ako mamaya. And this is my prayer. My prayer is that our faith will bear fruits. Sana po, mamunga ang ating pananampalataya. And how do we do that? Pag-uusapan po natin ngayon yan. I think you will agree with me that our faith nowadays is being challenged. In our world today, our faith is constantly tested. How can we give that gift that we receive, that faith that we receive, how are we going to share that? Alam niyo, siguro maganda pag-usapan natin ano yung mga nagiging balakid ngayon sa ating lipuna, no? Sa ating Christian nation. Or huwag na tayong pumunta sa malawak na, na konteksto. Dito na lang po sa kinagagalawan natin, sa bago bantay. Yan. Tignan po natin. Number one, na nakikita ko isang fenomenon na malaking hamon sa atin. Secularization. Alam niyo po yung secularization, no? Uh, secularization, yung parang, yung uh, hindi na importante kung may religion ka. Hindi na importante kung nagdadasal ka or what. No? Well, kung, kung nakakatulong sa yun, go ahead. Kung hindi naman, may iba ka ano, di okay din. No? Yan, secularization. Parang, wala na yung, uh, yung, ang importante na lang ngayon eh, yung maraming bagay na Basta ako, may spirituality ako. Pero hindi na importante kung sino yung sinasamba ko. Wala na. Okay. O ako naman, sasabihin ko na, hindi. Pare-pareho ah, naman lahat yung religion na yan. Eh. Hindi, pare-pareho naman lahat yung Diyos na yan. Kahit sino pa yan. Kung ang pangalan yan, Kristo. O sa iba naman, ito pangalan. O iba naman, sabi ganito, pare-pareho lang lahat yan. Ayan, no? Okay? And this is a phenomenon that's happening now. And your friends could be one of them or your children no tingnan niyo mga facebook no i love reading comments no no yung mga dating mga very uh, very fervent in their christian faith all of a sudden sabi nila hindi na hindi na ako naniniwala diyan no yeah. secularization lumalakas po ngayon yan no although sa pilipinas medyo hindi pa gaano no Pero sa ibang bansa ho, if you go abroad, no, you will know what I mean, no, sa Europa, no, sobra yan, no, uh, no. Nagkaroon na ng ano, ng, uh, kumbaga sa, no, uh, na iba na ang meaning ng spirituality, no, naging ano na lang, you know, generalize. Kung ano yung maganda para sa'yo, yun na yun, okay? It doesn't matter, no, 
kung ano pa yan. No? So, why is this a challenge? This is a challenge. Because there are many young people now who would say, I don't need to go to church because I can be a good person even without going to church. Totoo naman. You can. Kaya lang ho. I will challenge that position. No? I will challenge that. No? Dahil there are many forces out there that are influencing us. Naalala ko na, no? may, isang, may mga magulang lumalapit sa akin, Father, okay naman yung anak ko, mabait naman eh. Pero hindi na siya nagsisimba, no? Hindi na siya maupunta ng simbahan. Pero mabait siya, hindi naman siya nagda-drugs, no? Lagi lang nasa bahay, no? Hindi naman siya nananakit ng kapwa niya. So, I think okay na yun. Ayan. I don't know if you've encountered that, no? I've encountered that a lot, no? And what do I do? To be honest, I don't know how to react uh, much on that. But I always tell myself, no, pag narinig ko yun, are they really okay? When we lose that sense of transcendence in life, are we really that okay? Look at this, no? There are now many studies demonstrating na yung mga nawawalan ng uh, yung spirituality on believing on something like what we believe in, no? yung depression mas tumataas. Narinig nyo ba yan? Suicide tumataas. No? And how spirituality can help them also no? to have hope in life. No? Kaya hindi ko alam, no? yung phenomenon na yun. And yung idea na kinakailangan na pwede naman sa bahay lang, no? magdasal, pwede naman. No? Kaya lang, ano kaya yung nadadasal? No? Ano kaya yung naa-absorb ng mga kabataan ngayon? I'm sure they go to other channels, no? Lalong-lalo na ang internet ngayon, no? Di ba? Facebook. Oh. There are many young people who are hungering from something that is transcendental, no? Yung bang uh, hungering for uh, that will give them hope. Hungering for something that will give them more meaning in life. Marami po mga kabataan naghahanap ng ganyan. Ano ba ang buhay ko? Saan patungo ito? And the challenge now is that many times, no, they no longer hear, no? And when they hear how they whenever they hear, if ever they hear the word of God, how beautiful the world word of God, I am sure they will appreciate life even more because the word of god will give meaning to them unfortunately if you don't go to church will you hear the word of god pwede naman siguro no pero look at that advantage when you go to church and when you hear the word of god being proclaimed every mass that word of god is powerful why because that Word of God is telling us to love one another. That Word of God is telling us to forgive each other. That Word of God is telling us to serve the least of our brothers and sisters. That Word of God is telling us that we have a reward in heaven. That Word of God is giving us so many values and if they don't come to church will they hear that ano ang naririnig nila punta tayo sa pangalawa ang malakas ngayon materialism and consumerism ang naririnig lagi ng mga bata ngayon bilhin mo to gagawa po ka gaganda ka no bilhin mo to by this, you will be very popular. People will love you more, will appreciate you more. No, I always use this example. No? This was a long time ago when I was driving along Edsa Avenue and then I saw a big billboard. Ewan ko kung nakita nito. Matagal lang ito eh. Nakalagay sa, bill, sa uh, ito? 
sa billboard. Beauty is power. Ba? Hanip sa. Beauty is power. Tapos sa ilalim. Sino to yung, ano, yung nagpapaganda ng mga tao? Nagpapagawa po ng mga tao? Sino to? Nakalimutan ko. Belo, belo. Okay. <laughs> Tapos, mga magagat, magaganda at gwapong lalaki ang nakikita ro. Magagandang babae, gwapo. Sa malaking billboard no, along edge sa beauty is power. What is that sending? What message? What message is that sending to young people that, these days when they see that? For me, it is just sending that message that if you want to be powerful, you have to be beautiful and handsome. Kinakailangan magpaayos ka ng mukha. Kinakailangan magpaputi ka. And what's, how is that affecting our young people? Beauty has become very superficial. Kaya, if they do not achieve that kind of standard, what happens to the young people? They get so frustrated. They get depressed because people don't like them. They feel they are worthless. And we are seeing this phenomenon now affecting our young people. Imagine, Para maging popular ka, para maging sikat ka, para maging powerful ka, para yumaman ka, kinakailangan maging gwapo't maganda ka. Pumunta ka rito, pagagandahin kita, pagagwapuhin kita. Eh yung mga walang pera, sorry na lang kayo. Your worth now is dependent on physical appearance. If our young people will be hearing more the word of God, will the Lord say, for you to go to heaven, take glutathione every day? Diba? Will the Lord say, if you want to have eternal reward in heaven, no? Okay? You wear this branded shirt and shoes and be always updated with the best technology. Is that what we hear in the Word of God? Of course not. The Word of God is very uh, uh, opposite of what the world is telling us. Alam niyo po, psychologist po kasi ako, no? Kaya po medyo ganito po siguro yung aking ano, kaya pasensya na po, no? Pero itong mga nakikita natin ito, nakaka-apekto po talaga. Do you think these advertisers will not spend millions if they will not get back anything? They know. That's part of the psychology. No? They know. They invest thousands of pesos for these advertisers. Why? Advertisements. Kasi they will attract buyers. Meaning to say, the more you see that, the more you are influenced by them. Pag araw-araw kang dumadaan ng EDSA, one of these days, magugulat ka na lang. Bili nga ako ng glutathione, magpa-inject nga ako. No? Magulat ka na lang, no? O kaya, ano yung usong sabon, no? Marami, di ba? Tutuwa ako pag bubunta ako sa, ano eh, sa mga mall. No? Yung mga kojik, no? Ang dami, no? Talagang sumikat siya ngayon, no? The power of advertising, no? Di ba? Okay? So, our generation today is exposed to so much materialism and consumerism that they see that if they want to be happy, they have to have more. The world, the real world, is what you see. Ang totoong mundo ay yung nakikita mo. Alam ko, mas challenging ho sa inyo habang naglala, nagdadrive nga ako kasama ko si Daniel. Tabin lang ho ninyo ang SM. <laughs> Di ho ba? Very challenging sa mga young people na nakatira dito. No? I remember, no, no, naging issue sa school sa San Francisco ba yun? No? 
Oh, uh, na-news po 'yun eh, no? na, 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 naging issue yung mga bata nagka-cutting classes lagi. That was then. I don't know now, no. I think pinagbawal na eh, no. Pag naka-uniform. So mga estudyante ngayon nagbabaon na siguro ng damit. No, para mag-ano, na para mag-cutting class. Naging issue no na, na news po 'yun, no. Na yung mga bata doon pupunta doon na nag-school kasi very attractive talaga, no. And just imagine, no. Young people today are born to buy. Yun nga yung sabi. Young people today are born to buy. Kaya ang hirap, no? Kaya yung, ano, yung consumerism is really consuming us. And what's happening because of that? What happens to the spiritual? That is a very good question. If material things is elevated... To the highest level, as the value most important today, but we do not share that gift that we receive. There are other forces who will do their homework. Sabi ko nga po sa inyo, yung mga anak po natin, no, madalas po na sa internet na, pumupunta sa YouTube, no, kung ano ano pa, at ano ang natututunan nila don? God only knows, no. Totoo po yan. No? And if we do not do our part, what about their formation? Okay. Kaya we have a very big role to play, my dear brothers and sisters. We have. And I was saying, na papaano kaya po natin bubuhayin yung ating pananampalataya. Ito lang po ang aking prayer po, no? tayo po sana, no? how I wish that our faith that is born in this church will become more active like St. Paul, like the apostles, like the early disciples. We become more active in our faith And I also hope that our faith will transform us. Will slowly transform us so that we become credible bearers of that faith. Kasi nakakalungkot din po, no? Minsan po, magaling lang po tayo magsalita. Si Father, ang galing-galing magsalita, pero wala naman sa gawa. Di ba? Nakakalungkot. Di ba sabihin, Father, dyan, no? Sasalita na naman, no? Pero kung ano nung ginagawa naman. Pwede, no? Di ba? That's why we need a faith that is buhay. Pananampalatayang buhay. Nang sa ganun, we become really that bearer of that gift. And when we go out, no? To the streets, maging attractive ang ating pananampalataya. Let me end my sharing tonight with with a story. With a story, I guess, a very personal story. No, no. No, uh, 2016. Marami pong uh, unti-unti na sa payatas po yung aming. Uh, Payatas po eh aming, ng mga Vincentians, ay parokya po namin yon. Pero ako po ay naka-assign sa St. Vincent Seminary. No? Um, so 2016, na-assign po ako sa St. Vincent Seminary sa DePaul House. Naging formator po ako ng mga nagpapari. And then, sa payatas na rinig ko marami na nama- napapatay. No? Uh, may mga napapatay na po doon dahil mga, mga addict daw o napagkamalan. Pero anyway, just the same. I started, may nabisita akong mag, ma, mga mag-lola. And then all of a sudden, no, nakinig ako sa mga bata, I just found myself crying. No? Nung madinig ko yung kwento ng mga bata. At yung mga bata, umiiyak na rin. No? Mga malilit pala ho yung mga bata. Ang dami nila. So sabi ko, ano kaya magagawa ko para matulungan itong mga ito? Yun yung tanong ko sa sarili ko, what can I do? No? They witness violence. Yes, they are not perfect family. And these young children witness violence. And I don't want them to grow up having that resentment in their hearts. Because that will be very, very tragic. 
You know why? Kasi that will be a continuation of another violence. Pag laki ng mga batang ito, sabi ko, they will be also aggressor one day. Kaya sabi ko, I need to do something. And I think the other priests who were with me are thinking in the same line. How can we help? Dahil ang lilit pa ho ng mga bata. So what did we do? We gathered them. No? I, I, naalala ko nga po, eh, no? nag-post ako sa Facebook ko, December noon eh. Uh, Nag-Christmas party kasi kami doon. Nag-post ako ng story ng Facebook ko about that. And then when I started writing, no, na umiiyak pa nga ho ako habang sinusulat ko yun, I still remember, no? I was so emotional during that time. And then I wrote that uh, story sa Facebook ko. And I was just surprised. After some time, marami hong nakabasa ng post ko, no? And then some of my friends started messaging me, Father, how can we help? This family. Sabi ko, um, to be honest, I don't know. And then they started sending money. They started sending money. Sabi nila, Father, please give this to the families. No? Uh, our way of helping them to stand up again and how they can uh, make better their lives. No? So, nakatanggap po ako ng pera. Sabi ko, ano kayong gagawin ko? Tinawagan ko yung isang pari namin kasama doon sa parish priest po ng payata. Sabi ko, uh, Father, I got some money sa aking mga kaibigan. Eh, Nangako ko ibibigay ko sa kanila. Ilan ba yung family dyan na naapektuhan at na, 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 na mga tatay? Binilang niya, siguro nag-invite sila, mga sampu dumating. Okay, tapos pumunta ako ron. Then we started giving out no? yung mga pagkain, mga bigas, and then... Tanong ko uli, so tapos na, anong gagawin? No? After this, so... The uh, spiritual leader in me and the psychologist in me, sinasabi ko, ito mga batang to na trauma rin. No? I need to do something. No? Kaya nagkasundo kami na we will gather this every time, eh, almost twice a month, pa-process din namin yung mga bata, pakikinggan namin yung stories nila, nang sa ganun may maggagabay sa kanila. You know what? Since 2016 hanggang ngayon, patuloy po sila, no? And I'm just so proud when I hear stories like yung mga bata are excelling sa school, no? Nag-pandemic lang po eh, no? And the children are becoming more, you know, loving. No? Although, of course, may mga resentments pa rin. But the hope is there. No? Mas buhay sa aking palagay yung kanilang pananampalataya. They were, many of them were even saying, no? Yung iba mga bata, Father, paglaki ko, gusto ko gumanti. May mga ganun. Nung una, no? Ngayon, medyo yung iba nag, nag-change na ng tono. Father, hindi na ho importante makaganti kami. Napatawad na namin sila. No? Ang importante na lang ngayon ay paano kami makatayo at magbagong buhay. My dear brothers and sisters, I think part of our calling is this, that we need to engage the world once again. And we are gifted with that faith. And that faith is itong buhay dapat. How we can make alive that faith so that we can transform the world around us. Siguro baka hindi na ako kinakailangan kagaya ko may payatas. Baka kayo lang, baka sa family lang po ninyo. Baka lagi nag-aaway yung family niyo may problema. Ano kaya pwede natin magawa? Na? Baka lagi kayong hinagkakatampuan o kaya meron kayong nagkakasakitan. Ano kaya pwede kong gawin para mabuhay ang pananampalataya ng family ko? How can we bring that together and experience that love of God so that slowly we can transform again our families? Nang sa ganun yung mga bata habang lumalaki, no? Ay maging mga mabubuting tao. Habang lumalaki, hindi sarili lamang ang iniisip. Habang lumalaki, hindi importante sa kanila maging maputi at magparitoke. Hindi importante sa kanila yun. No? Habang lumalaki, hindi rin importante sa kanilang gumastos ng gumastos 
at bumili ng mga mamahaling mga bagay na hindi naman nila kailangan. At habang lumalaki, hindi sarili lamang ang iniisip. Hindi yung kanilang pakanan lamang at walang pakialam kung ano ang nangyayari sa lipunan. Dahil pag buhay ang ating pananampalataya, I'm sure, our generation will slowly be transformed. Iiwanan ko po ulit ito, no? Sabi ni Kristo, Go to all the nations and proclaim the good news. We are gifted. And there is that responsibility attached to that. And that is, hindi na ho, go to all the nations siguro, no? Go to your homes and proclaim the good news. Go to your neighbors and proclaim the good news. Not only in words, but more so in your actions. Salamat po. Nangako ko na matatapos tayo ng ano yun. So, buti na lang meron kayong rilo na nasa harapan ko. No? <laughs> so, maraming maraming salamat. Muli po, Father John, maraming salamat sa pagpapaalala. At kanina po habang nanonood din po ako ng Facebook nating live, may mga nag-donate po ng mga stars. Hindi ko po alam kung sinasadya nila o napipindot lang po nila. Kaya na nakukonsyensya po tuloy ako na habang nagre-recollection, kumita pa po ang ating parokya <laughs> ng $1.25 cents. <laughs> Uh, hindi, siguro po tuwan-tuwa yung mga nanonood na uh, halos 100 din pong nanonood at napindot po siguro nila yung stars. Pero maliban po doon sa stars, Father, ay maraming salamat po sa pagpapaalala sa aming parokya ng, na kami ay binayayaan para maging grasya sa kapwa namin. At tama nga po. Maraming tunggali at katunggali sa ating pananampalataya. Subalit, ang hamon sa atin ay kung paano pa mas lalong makisangkot ang isa't isa sa lahat ng itong mga pagsubok. Lalo na po ngayon, Father, ay tinalian na po ulit namin yung upuan dahil kaunti na lang po muli at tumataas na ang kaso sa uh, Tandansor ay sa Bago Bantay pala, <laughs> sa, sa Bago Bantay dito sa amin ay hindi po manghihina kundi dahil sa inyo pong paalala palalakasin pa ang pananampalataya Tanda po ng pasasalamat naming taga Bago Bantay sa una at tuloy-tuloy pong pagpasok ninyo at makapagmisa po sana sa ilang isang linggo sa amin tanggapin niyo po ang aming replika ng uh, aming santo ninyo ni Bago Bantay at para po sa paalala at pasasalamat po namin. Mga minamahal, si Father John, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo pong pagpapaunlak sa amin. Yan po ang aming replica po kami. So, hiling po namin kay Father na uh, ang kanyang pagpapa pagbabasbas para po sa aming parokya. Thank you very much po for inviting me, Father. Thank you for making me part of your parish, no? Yeah, sana po makapagmisa rin ako paminsan-minsan, no? Thank you, and I would be happy to see you around again. Sa ngala ng Ama, ng Anak, ng Spiritu Santo, Amen. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa mga biyayang inyo pong pinagkaloob sa aming lahat. Nawa po, patuloy niyo po kami gabayan at bigyan ng lakas ng loob upang isabuhay namin ang aming mga pananampalataya upang ipalaganap namin ang iyong kabutihan sa buong mundo. Hinihiling namin ito sa ngalan ng aming Panginoong si Jesus. Amen. Sumayin niyo ang Panginoon. Pagpalainawa kayo ng makapangyariang Diyos Ama, 
anak at Espiritu Santo. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at good evening po at good night naman sa iba. Thank you.